price point people would pay for these? Because I personally think it's an excellent idea. I mean, but how are you going to know how to price them so that they're affordable yet you can make a profit on them? That's a great question. And I actually have a very funny way of doing this. Um, so you could either, how some businesses do this is that they spend a lot of money on market research and they pay like another party to go out and actually do that research for them. Um, but me being a college student and me not even being able to sell anything at this point in time, I have to be re really strategic in kind of how I do things. So um, last year, Black Friday actually, I went out and I went to different shoe stores. And I would go ask women, I'd say, hey, you're looking at a pair of high heel shoes. Um, you know, wouldn't it be nice if you could just rip the heel off the back of that and have this shoe convert into a flat? And they just look at me. And I was like, that'd be such a great idea. I'd pay a lot of money for that. How much would you pay? <laughs> um, so just be very, like kind of, it's called guerrilla marketing. So, um, you know, just acting like you're a normal consumer having a conversation with somebody and then getting their feedback on that. Um, and I've also passed around a survey to the different professional women out throughout the Des Moines area. Since I live in Ames, it's very easy for me to access that big professional market of women in Des Moines. Um, so I created a survey and also passed it out to them and said, hey, I'm just trying to see if this, um, I'm a student right now, I'm doing some research, would you be willing to help me? So that's kind of how I went about doing that as well. Um, and that's just helping me gain more um, understanding of the viability of this product because it's going to cost a lot of money to make but from what I've been able to uncover is that they're willing to spend about $250 mm -hmm. for a pair of shoes like this um, so it's gonna be pretty expensive um, but definitely if you think about it you're kind of getting two shoes for one right. um, and this is a brand new product too so essentially it's gonna save women a lot of pain and hassle um, so looking at the value proposition I think that's very important and understanding what your business is worth and kind of um, how revolutionizing it'll be in the industry, essentially. So I hope that answered your question. Yeah. Awesome. So what'd you learn from that conversation? Kinsey, what she do that was courageous and helping? What she do in that? Well, I think really what she did was <coughs> instead of paying a lot of money to get like the marketing and stuff, she just did it the easy way and she did it herself. Like it was a good marketing strategy. Cool. Thank you. Goes right to the customer. Notice that. Amanda, what you thinking? What question would you toss out? Um, when your product reaches maturity level, like the maturity level, what are you going to do? How are you going to change it to bring it back down to growth stage? You know, that's a very good question. I think that really relies on um, just watching the market trends that are out there. So as you probably have learned in your classes, you know, once you reach the maturity level, you need to start researching and developing your product to kind of bring it back down to the intro stage and just help always maintain that growth um, and that profit that rolls in. So I think it's important to just always recognize those different market trends because then essentially that's where the businesses are going. So um, I essentially, if I always just think smart and always recognize those trends before my competitors do, I think that's really going to help um, my product essentially and just kind of introducing it with different colors, different themes, different patterns and prints essentially because um, that's what kind of what the fashion industry does. So. Bailey, what you think? So yeah, that's a great question too. Um, <coughs> honestly, I kind of, um, so th this is how my story kind of went and this is when I kind of realized that I need to start working harder than what I did work. Um, so I came up with the idea a couple years ago, about three and a half years ago, and I was like, yeah, I'm gonna make all this money, I'm gonna be so successful, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. You know, people are gonna love my product, but I really didn't do anything. I was just talking up my idea. Um, I was what they call like a entrepreneur. So I wanted it all, but I didn't actually work for it. And then like, I just had like a realization like a couple months ago, oh my gosh, what have I been doing with my time? I have all these resources that the Iowa State's provided me, that NICA's provided me, why didn't I ever take advantage of it? Um, so when I initially had the idea, I just basically talked it up and I didn't do anything, but I've taken advantage of a lot of different resources and um, doing pitch competitions, that's another really big thing that I've taken advantage of. I've done about 10 over the last year, which is pretty awesome, and I've won a lot of money from it. So um, I've just kind of been throwing myself out there in front of crowds and in front of people, just networking, making sure that I find good connections that can help me with this. So um, I think that's really important, especially whatever you guys want to do. I think it's just important to always go out 
and go to events, go network with people. So it's really important um, for your future career and even for you now, is just to be able to have a conversation with somebody and listen to them and also communicate effectively. That's, that's one of the crucial pieces of your skill set that you need to have. So um, that's essentially what I've been doing over the last um, couple months since I basically came up with the idea. How long does a set of high heels last? Because I'm thinking $250 is a lot of money. I know a pair of shoes doesn't last me that long. I'll wear them out mm -hmm. six, eight months. So is $250 going to be like a good investment? Yeah, you can do it for as long as you want. Yeah. Like I said, it's all about the person. Yeah. 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 Um, from what I've been able to uncover, women can you test that? So you wear a different pair of shoes like at least three times a week. <laughs> no, some people might. Um, so women go through, women buy a lot of pairs of shoes. So essentially like men, you probably buy one pair of shoes and wear them all at once, right? Am, am I getting that right? Maybe two pairs? So, um, you know, since you're wearing those shoes every day, they're not gonna last you quite as long. <clears throat> But for women, I would say that they can maybe have a pair of shoes for about a year um, or so without them really deteriorating and wearing out. Um, but also with an expensive product like this, I'm gonna be competing up with a lot of the top end fashion designers. So like Michael Kors, if anyone has, anyone's ever heard of them. Um, so they're, they have high quality products. So that's what I'm gonna be competing up against. So when I'm gonna be selling my product at a very high price point, then people are going to expect really great quality from it. So um, it's going to be a lot different in regards to the different high heel shoes that you can buy, say, at like Payless shoes for like 40 bucks or 30 bucks. Um, so they're going to last some, last women quite a long time longer, especially since you're going to have a heel and a flat all at once. Um, so I would probably say like about a year, year and a half is what the lifespan is going to be from what I've been able to research, but that could also very well change depending on what my final prototype looks like and um, what the design and everything, the materials used and everything like that. So did, I get, did that answer your question? Okay. I'll jump in on this. Think about target marketing, what we've been looking at as far as demographics. Does this product match a North Iowa demographic? No. 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 So that one of the challenges, one of the things I respect about Jessica's oh. work here, understand she's come up from a North Iowa environment, which 99% of us in the room have, but working on a product that, that, that doesn't match this crowd, right? So she's gonna have to find that target audience somewhere, and that's probably not gonna be here. Fair enough, right? Rachel, what's running through your mind? Question, please. Uh, how does the shoe work? Does it, does it clip on, or how does it work? Yeah, that's a great question. I actually wish I could have brought my prototype with me here today, but um, I would say it has this huge week-long break right now, and that was actually, I was sitting on Thursday night, and I couldn't, go back to Ames because we had the huge snowstorm that hit us in central Iowa. So I unfortunately wasn't able to bring that prototype to show you all, but I was planning on it. Um, but yeah, that's a great question. So um, this is my very first drawing, which is not anything what it looks like today. So you always have to constantly develop your product once you discover new things. Um, so it's completely changed this, but my design <coughs> roommate actually drew these up for me because I have no design background whatsoever and I can't draw anything. I can't even draw, draw like a stick figure really. So um, this is what it looked like originally in this. I used this to just explain to people what I wanted to do, and it helped to get the visual across. So essentially, I kind of thought it would originally first start out with it kind of screwing in, and then it would could kind of like screw out. But then once I actually uncovered more research on how actually high heel shoes are made, I was like, that design will never work. So um, let me see if I can find. So this right here is kind of the anatomy of a high heel shoe. Um, Right in the center of the high heel, right here, it's called. It's a big metal component um, that really has the high heel shoe um, that really holds the support, and that's called the shank. And that is made. Um, every single high heel shoe is made just like that, currently. Um, so I had to really work around that because if it has that big metal component right in the middle of the shoe, it could never fold into a flat. So I'm actually with the College of Engineering at Iowa State right now, um, and we're trying to cover come up with. How can we really design this to actually make it work, and how can it actually hold a woman's weight when she's walking in a high heel shoe? Um, so 
right now, the, how the product is designed, um, have you ever looked at the drawer base and kind of look at the sliding component um, that holds the drawer? Like, it's kind of like the track um, is what they call it. Do you all know what I'm talking about? So that's kind of what the high heel is going to be doing. So it's going to just slide right in there. It's going to have a track that just guides the high heel shoe right in there. And um, maybe I can draw this out. Maybe it'll help um, resonate with some people. So you have the high heel shoe. And like I said, I'm not good at drawing. OK, so that is a shoe, promise. <laughs> um, <laughs> as I was talking about, right here is that middle component that goes all the way down like this. And then I'll use a different color. My drawing's so bad, it's gonna be hard to follow me. Um, so when the high heel when the high heel comes sliding out, the whole metal component comes with it. So you have it's kind of shaped like a really messed up V um, when it comes sliding out, but that'll allow the shoe to have more flexibility when it goes into a flat. So that's how it's gonna work as of this point in time. But um, whenever someone's developing a new product. There's always several different prototypes that come out just because you know, you want to have the product do this instead of that, um, or customers say, I want the product to do this for me. So you kind of always have to rework your prototype and just make sure that it's what the customer essentially wants in the end. Um, so I'm sure that that would be the final design, but as of right now, that's kind of what we're going with. So, yeah. Any other questions? I have two. Yeah. It's two part. Okay, I know you're working really hard right now. What are your plans when this just works? You can sell shoes, it kind of just does its thing. What more do you have in your pipeline? Mm -hmm. And number two, with that, why don't you think about going on Shark Tank? <laughs> okay. Do you have plans to go on Shark Tank? That's a great question. So I'll, I'll answer that one 